make a fuss over it. I promise. It's not that I don't appreciate you offering to stay with me while Peter's away. You go visit your friend. After the baby comes, there won't be much traveling. Thank you for understanding, Mary. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I do want to visit Belinda. It takes a lot more than that to hurt this old crow's feelings. <laughs> but it would hurt my feelings if you delivered my first grandson without me. I'll be back in plenty of time. <laughs> and I'm counting on you. Keep good thoughts. The baby. We'll see you in a few weeks, Mother. All right, Peter Watson, you drive slowly and easily and, and avoid the ruts and the bumps. Annie and my grandson do not need to be jostled around like a sack of potatoes. Yes, ma'am. I got it for you, Joe. Yes, sir! Skip up! <laughs> Feels awful sometimes. What exactly are you feeling? I don't mean to complain, doctor, but I'm just plum wore out. Sometimes I can barely keep my head up. And when did you start feeling this way? When I had my youngest, about five months ago. Open your mouth, please. Comes are very pale, Mabel. You haven't noticed when you look in the mirror? I'm not sure I know what they're supposed to look like. Well, I think you have anemia, which means you don't have enough iron in your body. It's common with new mothers. When the baby was inside of you, he took most of your iron. So it's nothing serious then? Oh, it's very serious. What took you so long to come to me? Well, you see, my husband doesn't think I'm really sick. He says I'm just lazy. You take care of six children and a husband. Why, you work harder than he does. Lloyd's a good man, Doc Owens. Really, he is. He just don't trust doctors. Not since his sister died. Is there a tonic I can take for this anemia? There is a tonic, but eating vegetables would be much more effective. Oh, he doesn't really like all those vegetables. He prefers his meat and potatoes. Take two spoonfuls twice a day and come and see me in a week. It's very important that my coming to see you is kept private. What goes on between a doctor and a patient is always very private. Hello, Lee. Hey there, Reverend. Leaving that bronc of yours saddled all day? I'm just trying to wear him down for the ride home. You're here early, you're here late. Sometimes I don't know if I'm coming or going. Aren't you expecting company? My wife's best friend from medical school. Well, she should get here any day now. Oh, I was referring to that apprentice of yours. He should be here on Thursday stage. I'll leave you to your work, Lee. Have a good day, Reverend. Thank you, All finished? That'll be $2 for the doctor and 50 cents for the medicine. doesn't allow me any extra money. I have to use the sock money I've saved up. Why don't we just call it a dollar even? Thank you. That's very kind of you. Don't mention it, Mrs. McQueen. Tell her I'll be by with that medicine. I will, absolutely. Very good to see you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Now you take care of yourself. Okay. <laughs> All right, pal. Let's have a nice, easy ride today. I don't want any more of that funny business. Here it comes. Easy. Settle down now. Settle. Settle. Easy now. 
Yes, we're still in the learning process. Come on. Wonderful, doesn't she, Pop? Sure, she uh, looks very round. Uh, I'm so glad you and Uncle Peter are here. Oh, let me get that. Oh, it's fine. If everyone treats me like a china doll, I'm not gonna break. I'm so glad you came. Me too. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you looking after Annie while I'm away. I didn't want to take a surveying job this close to her having a baby, but we need the money. I'll be back in plenty of time. Put your mind at ease, Pete. We're happy to have her. My mother would have stayed with Annie. But I wanted to come visit my best friend and her family before the baby comes. And we're so glad you did. How are things done at the clinic? Broken bones and bee stings, anything a nursing student could handle. Don't let her fool you, Annie. The town loves Ma. They wouldn't know what to do without her. Those are very kind words, Lillian, but they're hardly true. Hmm. Well, how about I start cleaning and Lee? You'll help them get settled in for the night? Marissa, it's good having Annie here. It is. She's your best friend, isn't she? I'd like to think of you as my very best friend. Why don't you tell your very best friend where you are? I'm right here. Well, you seem like you're a hundred miles away. I'm just tired. You sure that's all there is to it? What's wrong? I'm not pregnant. Don't worry yourself about it. We've tried for so long. We have more than we can handle with Lil. Oh, I know, but... It's just that when Annie found out the news, it made me want a baby of our own even more. Mm. And now that she's staying with us... No. We are gonna have a beautiful baby of our own. And all good things come in God's time, and... Maybe we should just let him decide. What if he doesn't want us to have a baby? Hey. Come on. Let's go help Lil finish the dishes. Hmm? I guess I'd best be leaving now. Peter, please be careful. Yes. My level and compass are dangerous pieces of equipment. I love you. I love you too. Bye, ladies. Take good care of my Annie. Will do. Step up! Joshua Coyle. Yes, sir. Lee Owens. Welcome, Sykes. How's your trip? Couldn't believe how far it was just to get here. Nothing but wide open spaces. This is your first time away from home? Yes, sir. Well, Sykes is a nice little town. I hope you like it. I expect so. Can I help you with your things? I don't have much. All right. Come on, let me show you the shop. Sounds good. So we do a little bit of everything here. Delivery work and rolling stock. Custom work for the building trade. Now, when your blows are even and you can work a straight piece of metal, those will be your tools. It's hard work. 
but you managed to make something in the last generation or two. Well, it gives you a sense of pride. I reckon that's true. What do you say? You ready to get started? Yes, sir. All right, then. How was your walk? Carrying around a 30-pound sack of flour? Slow day? Oh, I'm sure it's only a matter of time before someone comes in from getting caught on a rusty nail or falling off a ladder. You know, when I was traveling through Selena last month, there was a rash of copperhead snake bites. It felt like every day someone was dragged into the clinic. I haven't had anything as exciting as a snake bite in months. You should be grateful to have a healthy community to serve. It's our job as doctors to care about even the most minor illness or affliction. And our patients deserve and need our compassion. That's right out of a textbook. Linda, are you sure there isn't anything you'd like to talk to me about? You can tell me anything, you know that. Oh! What is it? It's a quick, sharp pain and shortness of breath and minor faintness. Let's get you to an examination room. It's not necessary. Is the baby moving? It isn't that. It's nothing to be concerned about. Let me finish some things up and we'll get you home. You know, my pa says walking's good for a man's constitution. You always walk? Well, lately I've been riding. You walking to my camp? No. I got a horse to give the little ant. But he's still a little green. Testy. I've been... Breaking him, getting ready for her to ride. Figured I'd give him and me the day off. I know nothing of saddle horses. Only harness bro. I stick with wagons. You better for it. I really wish you would just sit down after what happened today. What happened today? Absolutely nothing to be concerned about. And that's coming from the doctor and me. When you go home, who will deliver your baby? My mother-in-law. She's a midwife. Well, I wish I was the one delivering your baby. It's a doctor's job, after all. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Ladies, if you don't mind, I brought home a guest for supper. And you must be Joshua. Welcome to our home. Very nice to meet you, Mrs. Owens. Uh, that's Dr. Owens. You're a doctor? Yes, as is my best friend, Dr. Annie Watson. It's a pleasure to meet you, Joshua. Ma'am. Funny, I just had no idea women were allowed to be doctors. Allowed? No, I just... And just who would we need permission from? But go easy on him, Lil. He just got here. I'm sure he's aware of what women can accomplish. Apparently not. That's our daughter, Lillian. We raised her to speak her mind. You'll get used to it. Oh, now. Let's go get washed up. Smells like my favorite. Well, she certainly is your daughter. Indeed. <laughs> Miss Owens? Mr. Coyle? I just want you to know, I meant no disrespect earlier. I would express an opinion, but I'm not sure I'm allowed. Well, I'd very much like to hear your opinions. I think you're very old-fashioned. Women can pursue any career they want these days. They already have female lawyers, doctors, and ministers. A town in Kansas even had a woman mayor. Well, I have no objections to your mother and aunt being doctors. I swear. It's just, well, I've never met a lady doctor before. I'm apologizing. I guess I'm just not doing a very good job. Apology accepted. Well, I'll leave you to your schoolwork. No, this isn't for school. So you read for fun? I'd read just about all day if Mom and Pa let me. Well, all right. I'll leave you to your book, Miss Owens. Good night, Mr. Coyle. young man. I hadn't noticed. 
Good night, Pumpkin. Good night, Pa. Come in. How are you? I feel fine. Is everything all right? I can't get pregnant. Linda, you're young and healthy. It may just take some time. She's I think Lee is so disappointed. Have the two of you talked about it? Yes. And he says he's fine with the way our lives are, but recently he's been at work more than ever. His business is booming. He's had to hire help. You're probably right. <laughs> I'm really glad you're back and we can talk again. Me too. Oh! Annie, what is it? Oh, it's that pain again. And it's more severe this time. Oh, I feel lightheaded. Oh, Linda, I think something is really wrong. Is she gonna be all right? I believe so. The baby? He should be fine for now. Annie thinks it was preterm labor, but I just don't know. Why? I think it's eclampsia. That sounds serious. What is it? It's a condition of pregnant women, but it's not well understood. What makes you think that Annie has it? Well, the symptoms include muscle aches and pain. Severe agitation, unconsciousness, seizures. Did she have a seizure? No, but she has all the other symptoms. Well, I'll telegraph Peter first thing in the morning. Tell him what's happened. Thank you. And let him know I think it's best that Annie stay here for the remainder of her pregnancy. Bed rest is crucial. While I'm at it, I'll wire his mother. He said she lives in Spartan. Thank you. Do you really think this is necessary? Total rest for you, Mrs. Watson, and a dark room is conducive to rest. To being lazy, you mean. I cannot just lay around all day. I'm a doctor, remember? But I am your doctor, and this is my home, and if it is eclampsia, you know bed rest is called for. Don't you think you're overreacting? Perhaps. But if I'm not, I won't be sorry later. I love you. I love you, too. Here for my peach. Are you sure you don't want me to stay home with Aunt Annie? No, you just run along to school. I'll post a note on the clinic, and if someone really needs me, they know where to find me. Good morning, ladies. Morning. Bye, Ma. Have a good day, darling. Bye, Ma. Bye. That girl kicks up a cloud of dust everywhere she goes. Here you go. Is this your way of telling me not to come home for supper? The other one is for Joshua. A young man just starting off looked like he could use a few more good meals. Do you have any idea how much I love you? Well, it never hurts to hear it. Come on. I love you too, Lee Owens. Oh, and don't forget to send the telegrams. All right. Have a good day, sweet darling. <laughs> Belinda feels Annie's health as well as the baby's is better served staying here until after the delivery. I have wired Peter the same message. Lee Owens. That's what he said. Doc Owens. Mr. McQueen. So 
sorry, we're closed today, but if you'd like to make an appointment... Were you the one that gave Mabel this tonic? Yes, it's iron for her anemia. Why you got to go telling her she's got this and that condition? What she has is a spell of laziness. Mabel is sick, Mr. McQueen. Give her that medicine. I don't need your magic potion. A doctor killed my sister with tonic. I don't know the details of your sister's death, but there's no magic to it. Your wife had a baby a month ago, and she has a very serious medical condition. Maybe if you weren't so hard-headed, you would realize that. Now, my advice... I don't need your mouth nor your advice, and I don't need your magic potion. Doctors aren't worth a hoot and holler! Are you all right, Belinda? Yes, I'm just frustrated at a very stubborn and hard-headed man. Lloyd McQueen is truly set in his ways, but he's still a child of our maker. He has no compassion for his wife's condition. Can't we all get caught up in our own lives at times and lose sight of the compassion we should have for others? There I go preaching again. Oh, it's all right. I suppose I needed to hear it. I'll see you in church, Belinda. Good day. Steady blows. All right. Your daughter seems very smart, Mr. Owens. You must run in the family. Uh, I wish I could take credit for Lillian's intelligence, but she was adopted. Still, I couldn't be prouder. Really? Huh. I never would have known. I mean, she and Mrs. I mean, Dr. Owens sort of look alike. Is that a fact? Well, yeah, I mean, it's just, Lillian's very pretty. Yeah, I know she's pretty. I'm truthfully not that hungry. Doctor's orders. Even if you don't feel up to it, you need to finish the entire bowl. I'm not a child, Belinda. And I'm a doctor. I think I know what's best for me. Knowing and doing are two entirely different things. <sighs> Is that another contraction? No, the baby's just kicking. And I have to tell you, I'm a little relieved. I haven't felt him move since the contractions yesterday. You just said it was... He? How do you know it's a boy? I know it sounds silly, but... Mary thinks because I'm carrying so low that it'll be a boy. It is silly. That's an old wives' tale. There's no medical merit to it. Say what you want, but when Peter's sister was pregnant, Mary was concerned because she was carrying so far out in front. She said it would be a breech birth, and she was right. One lucky guess, and she's got you believing made-up stories. Goodness, he's getting his exercise today. Do you want to feel? That's all right. Come on, Belinda. Don't be nervous. It's so strange. I never thought I'd be a mother. Now it suddenly feels like the most natural thing in the world. I'm sorry. I've opened that wound, haven't I? Maybe we shouldn't talk about it. You know, I know so many women that have gotten pregnant without even trying. And Lee and I have been trying. We've both seen it take some time. You just can't get impatient with yourself. I look after this one woman, Mabel McQueen. She's had six babies in the past eight years without even trying. It's important to you, isn't it? My best get supper ready. Thea and Lillian will be home soon. I'm here to talk whenever you'd like to. Please eat your soup, Annie. I was wondering where you'd run off to. I just looked in on Annie. She's out for the night. She keeps insisting she feels fine. <laughs> I think I've heard that before. You two are so much alike, it's frightening. <laughs> I suppose that's why we're such good friends. Mm -hmm. I noticed you didn't have Joshua over for supper tonight. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's sweet on Lil. Uh, I don't want the two of them spending too much time together. Why not? He's only a couple years older. Doc, 
He's an apprentice blacksmith. I want better for Lillian. I'm the wife of a blacksmith, and you don't hear me complaining. I spent the last five years trying to figure out how I tricked you into marrying me. You could have done much better. You didn't trick me into anything. I married you because I fell in love with you, Leon's. And if Lillian and Joshua had taken interest in one another, I don't think it's our place to stand in their way. Besides, telling Lillian she can't have something's like daring to try to stop her. <laughs> uh, I get your point. I don't want to get in the way of her happiness. Still, you left a small town to follow your dream. And if Lil wants to go to college, I darn sure want to see it happen. I don't want her tied down to Saxon. I hope she knows what a wonderful and caring father she has. Yeah, it's getting a little chilly. Want to turn in for the night? Oh, you go ahead. I'll be up in a little while. such a hurry, pretty lady. Please allow me to pass. Oh, we need to get to know each other. I think not. I don't want to be late for school. Well, I can teach you more than any school can. Excuse me. Am I letting the young lady pass? This ain't none of your affair, sodbuster. Ah, but it is. It ain't. Here. Knock your head off, boy. Right, now, you hold on a second. Now, the good book tells me to turn the other cheek. Now, I only have two. So after the second, I'm on my own. <laughs> that was the second cheek. You're breaking my wrist. Well, I understand there's a fine doctor in town. You yeah, please don't. Please don't break it. I trust I'll never see you around Miss Owens again. No, never. Good. Now, get Morning, Miss Owens. You on your way to school? Indeed I am. May I walk with you? I did the best I could, Jim, but you gotta go easy on it, all right? Boss strikes me as a hard-working man. He lives and breathes work. Ma says sometimes he rolls over to sleep and tries to use their arms like a set of tongs. <laughs> I guess that's the future I have to look forward to. Not such a bad life, really. So what about you? You're gonna become a doctor like your ma? I don't know. I haven't decided. Maybe I want to be a lawyer or a famous writer like Harriet Beecher Stowe. One thing for sure, I want to go to college. Well, I better get to work. Have a nice day, Joshua. You too, Lily. I don't think you should be climbing the stairs. But I feel fine. What's making me crazy is sitting in a dark room all day. But it's only been three days since you had pain and felt faint. You know the symptoms and treatment as well as I do. That's assuming your diagnosis is correct. Is that singing? I would know that voice anywhere. That's Mary. Your mother-in-law? What reason does she have to be here? <laughs> Mary doesn't need a reason to do anything. <laughs> Have a blessed day. And you must be the infamous Doc Owens. Infamous. Mary Watson. Oh, do you need that already? Now, where is my peach pie? Oh, uh, uh, would you be a dear and bring my things along? <laughs> Mary! 
Mary, what are you doing here? Where else would you expect me to be? Oh, my little lamb. What? But didn't you get the telegraph from Belinda's husband? I did. That's why I'm here. I have nothing against you finishing out your term with your friend, but I certainly wasn't going to miss the birth of my first grandson. <laughs> I've missed you. Oh, it's darker than the inside of a cow in here. Yes, it is. Oh, please don't do that. What? She's not a mushroom. She needs light. All right, Doug. Let's sit up so I can get a good look. I'm sorry. What are you doing? I'm getting her upright. If she stays in this bed too long, she'll get a crick in her back and it'll make delivery much more painful. I think it's better that she's on bed rest for the remainder of her term. It's not going to hurt her to sit up. <laughs> when you've delivered as many babies as I have, you learn a few things. Well, I've been to medical school for years and rest is the proper treatment. You don't learn everything oh. in medical school. That is a matter of opinion and I wholeheartedly disagree. Ladies, I'm not a sack of flour. <sighs> There I was in the middle of the worst blizzard I ever saw. I wasn't too surprised when three babies were delivered that night. I expected twins, not triplets. In a blizzard? Oh, the little ones pop out whenever they want, regardless of the weather. Fortunately, I don't have many emergencies. Women giving birth are always an emergency. <laughs> That's the penalty we pay for Eve eating the apple. It is not a penalty. Wow, Mrs. Watson, you sure got an exciting life. <clears throat> well, I should probably get you up to your room, Annie. You let that little fella start running your life now, you'll be lacing his shoes when he's 30. Yes, Annie told me you believe it's a boy. Believe nothing. It's a fact. <laughs> Honestly, Mary, you can't Actually, possibly. I am a little tired. I can manage on my own. Good night, all. Good night, Annie. Rest well, dear. Good night, Annie. Good night, Annie. There is no way to tell whether... Oh, I think it's time we all settle down. Huh? We have a full day tomorrow. Thank you for dinner, Dr. Holmes. Joshua. William told us that you came to her rescue. Her mother and I both appreciate it. It was my pleasure, sir. Thank you again. I'll walk you out. Aren't they the most adorable couple? <laughs> so tell me, how was Captain Nemo this evening? When I left him, he was exploring the ruins of Atlantis, although I can't say for sure what he does when I'm not looking. <laughs> I never met a girl who made a book sound so interesting. You can borrow it if you like. No, no, I'm not sure if I'm sold on Nemo just yet. Maybe you could read some of it to me, though. Just so I can find out if it's my kind of story. I could do that. Would you like to go on a picnic with me? Maybe on Saturday? We can go out and find a nice quiet spot and read? I think I know just the place. Lee Owens, you are not spying on our only daughter. I'm not spying on her. I'm just looking out for her. Good night. Got there. Well, you're uh, really improving. Thank you, sir. I'm trying my best to impress you. Well, as long as it's me you're trying to impress. Well, to be honest, I wanted to ask you maybe uh, Lily and I. Do you want permission to court Lily? Right? Yes, sir. Well, I don't want to distract her from her goals. Well, I promise I'll be respectful of her and not get in the way of her schooling. I know how much she wants to go to college. Well, I'll think about it, all right? I understand. Meantime, finish up with that horseshoe. Miller wants his order by noon. Yes, sir. 
You're gonna be late opening your clinic. I don't feel comfortable leaving Annie here all alone, and I certainly don't feel comfortable with her being out of bed this much. You know, I wish the two of you wouldn't talk about me as if I wasn't sitting right here. Sorry, sweetheart. You must be so frustrated, cooped up inside all the time. I will be here with her all day. You tend to your patients, and we'll see you at supper. If you need anything, I'll be close by. Thank you. Have a nice day. Praise the Lord, we're free. <laughs> Peach pie, you get dressed. We are going out to smell the roses. Oh, to town. <laughs> Doc Owens, can I talk to you? Mrs. McQueen, come in. I only have a minute. I left Lloyd at the general store, said I was running to the butcher. What can I do for you, Mabel? Doc, I feel terrible. The sickness, it's just getting worse. I'm dizzy all the time, and I can barely pick up the youngins. That's because your anemia is getting worse. Your body needs iron. You're only going to get sicker. What can I do to make it better? I already told you. Vegetables or the tonic. If you don't listen to my instructions, there is nothing more I can do. I tried to take the tonic. Really, I did. Even started to feel a little stronger. And then Lloyd found it, and you know the rest. I certainly do. He threw a bottle at me. I'm sorry for that. Really, I am. He was just upset. He didn't mean anything by it. He's a wonderful husband and a father. Maybe, but I can't help you if you won't help yourself. Good day, Mrs. McQueen. doesn't seem too happy. I'd say it's just that she doesn't like me, but everybody likes me. She isn't happy. She's been trying to have a baby. And Belinda just feels discouraged. Me showing up in my condition and staying till the baby comes. I think it's just another painful reminder. Why didn't you say something sooner? If it's baby trouble she's got, I've surely got the cure. How about a sugary treat? I'm sorry, Lloyd. It isn't here yet. It's been over a week. You said it'd be here by now. The freight line lost the shipping order. There's nothing I can do about it. There's something I could do if there was another general store within 10 miles of here. It'll be here within a week. I'm here, Lloyd. What took you so long? I'm oh, sorry, Lloyd. There was a little bit of a line. There's always an excuse. Let's get out of here. I got fences to mend before sundown. She's just feeling poorly of late. She's got a newborn and five youngins. Says it wears her out. You think a mother doesn't work? I've seen this a bunch during and after pregnancy. This is a severe case of anemia. She don't need coddling, lady. I know how to take care of my wife. No, you don't. You are selfish and rude and contemptuous, and you can't see the forest for the trees. Doc Owen is trying to save your wife's life. She's dying. You get her over to the clinic, and you beg Doc Owens for more of that tonic. Don't talk to me like that. I'll talk to you any way I want. Get her to the clinic. You better pray to the merciful and good Lord that she doesn't slam the door in your ungrateful face. Give you a double dose, so do not take any more today. No, ma'am. Starting tomorrow morning, take two teaspoons every morning. And if you don't get your strength back in four days, get back in here.
would like to apologize. The last time we spoke, I lost my temper. What do I owe you for the tonic? Only that you allowed her to keep taking it. You don't need no charity. The first one was already paid for. This is just a replacement. Step up! Not anymore. My apprentice wants to court Lillian. His name is Joshua. I told him I'd think about it. Uh, then think. But don't think too long. Lillian's grown up. I'm having a hard time with it. You're having a hard time letting her grow up. I was trying to protect her. I don't think she needs protection from Joshua. He's a very nice young man. That's all you have to say about her? Good night, sweetheart. <sighs> all right. Tomorrow I'll give Joshua my permission to court Lil. I think I don't know about your little excursion with Annie. This town is filled with gossips. Can't keep a secret for more than five minutes. It's a pretty little town, Sykeston. I can see why you like it here. May I ask why you feel the need to go against every instruction I have for Annie? I don't deliberately go against your word. We just disagree about how to treat her. This isn't a competition, Mary. If a patient came to you with gangrene or pneumonia, I wouldn't dream of telling you how to treat them. That's your business. Babies are my business. Have been for 30 years. It's just there's been so many new advancements. Sometimes the old ways are best. Annie may have a serious condition which could be fatal to both her and the baby. Are you sure? Of course I'm not sure, but I'm not taking any chances. So it's true what they say, that doctors only practice medicine. This conversation obviously isn't getting us anywhere. So Annie tells me you're barren. Or, uh, or having trouble anyway. I don't think that's any of your concern. I see this problem a lot. If you want, I could give you some remedies that are guaranteed to work. I know how it's done, Mary. I don't think there's anything wrong with you. So what do you think is the problem? You're too high strung. Folks worry too much about work, family, or whether or not they can have a baby. Then years go by and nothing happens. Then one day, they decide to stop trying and before you know it, they find they're with child. So your sage advice for me is to relax. Read a book before you go to bed. Take some deep breaths. And before you know it, I'll be back to deliver your little one. I'll make sure I try that. Every baby boy needs his own blanket. <laughs> Don't you agree? Yes, I do. I'm gonna head to the shop for a few hours. I'll be back in time for supper. Don't you ever take time off? Oh, the good book says that a man who doesn't work doesn't deserve to eat. <laughs> I got a lot of work to do. We just thought you'd have more time off once you hired an apprentice. And I do. Now I'm only two weeks behind instead of six. Lillian, you look lovely. Where are you headed off to? Joshua and I are having a picnic. You enjoy yourself and please tell Joshua that we said hello. I will. You'll be back in time for supper now. No exceptions. I will, I promise. Bye, everyone. Bye, dear. I love it. The sea is everything. It covers seven-tenths of the terrestrial globe. Its breath is pure and healthy. 
It is an immense desert where man is never lonely, for he feels life stirring on all sides. The sea is the only embodiment of a supernatural and wonderful existence. It is nothing but love and emotion. It is the living infinite, as one of your poets has said. I've been reading for almost two hours. You must be bored. No, I don't think I can ever get bored listening to you talk. <laughs> You're just saying that. No, I'm not, I swear. It's just, I'd like this Captain Nemo if he weren't holding his friends hostage all the time. Well, I can't let them go and they might tell the world who he is. 20,000 Leagues is an allegory. It's about personal freedom. Nemo means nobody in Latin. and He's invisible to the world and wants to keep it that way. You're brilliant. You know that? I have not. Left. Lee, you working today? You work harder than any man I know. Well, I can't let the customers down. Besides, it gives me thinking time. Anything that you'd like to share with your pastor? This is a lot of rumbling around in my head like a marble. Sometimes it helps to speak it out loud. Talking to yourself only gets the answer you're looking for. I just can't figure Lillian out. I'm trying to be a good father to her, but... Our children grow up, start spreading their wings. The father has to be aware of that and try to grow with his child. Yeah, Belinda tolerates more than I do. She's a mother. The good Lord gave them the patience of Job when it comes to raising their children. He shortchanged fathers in that area. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really wish we would get some rest. I feel fine. Looks like someone may have been wrong about my condition. Perhaps. So if things improve with Lee, he says he isn't bothered, but I still sense that he's disappointed we can't have a baby. Well, maybe you're just being overly sensitive and you think that he's disappointed. Maybe. You know, I'm starting to think that maybe she regrets marrying me. Now, Lee, that is just plain nonsense. She's proud as a peacock that she married you. Maybe. Have you spoken to her about it? In a roundabout way. Of course, she says I'm wrong. Still, she seems kind of distant lately. She's got something on her mind. Most women do when they get like that. <laughs> mm. You know, we're, uh, we're trying to have a baby. So far, no luck. You have to have faith. Sometimes it's hard, River. Talk to her about your feelings. I best be getting home. This is Dave, so give me an earful if I'm late for supper. Yeah, myself included. Well, I see. You didn't need my help putting supper on the table. You were taking a nap, man. We just wanted you to be able to rest. I'll rest enough when I'm dead. Give me that knife before you cut yourself. <sighs> so, do you miss your family? I do. My pa's a farmer back in Pennsylvania. He wanted more for me than to spend my entire life plowing fields. So, I said if I got good enough, maybe I can find some work in Philadelphia. Sounds like he cares about you a lot. Yeah, my family's pretty close. It's kind of strange, though. Being out here all by myself, I have three sisters and two brothers, and not a moment of peace. Back at the boarding house, I got nothing but quiet. I know what you mean. I mostly grew up in an orphanage until Ma and Pa adopted me when I was 10. I'd spent so long in a room with other kids, I couldn't wait to have a room of my own. Now I miss having someone to talk to. Yeah, me. I do, don't I? So tell me something. How'd you ever find a place like this, anyway? I stumbled across it by accident while riding one day. That's so far off the main roads, no one really comes out here. So, I brought some of my old stuff, and now it's where I come to be alone. Well, I can see why. Captain Nemo had a cave near the ocean where he went to escape. This reminds me of it. You know, the timber still seems... Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Whoa! As sound as you might think. You're probably right. Well, I think it's best we pack up. Well, I'm happy.
happy to see you and Mary are getting along. Mm. You know, her fertility advice to me was to relax and read a book before bed. Did you try it? Of course not. She's been doing this longer than we've been alive. I can't believe you, Annie Watson. You've spent three years in medical school, five years practicing medicine, and you're gonna believe that woman's folk magic? It's rubbish, plain and simple. We ask people to believe in things they don't understand, and they do, because they have trust and faith in us. Just like they have faith in the Lord. Right. Okay, it is not the same thing, and we're talking about Mary here. Why do you have such a hard time believing in Mary's ways? Okay, Mary is a lovely woman, but you have to admit, she's a little touched in the head. She doesn't like me any more than I like her. Really? The other day at the general store, Mary defended you to the ends of the earth. What are you talking about? The man with the anemic wife? The one that you said was such a success story? Mary is the reason that he brought her back to you. That's why Lloyd McQueen brought his wife back to me? Mary unloaded on him like a tornado, spoke up for you, and just plain made him cower. Come on. Let's go. Thank you. Do you have any idea what time it is? Hi, Pa. We were supposed to be home for supper. Joshua and I weren't that hungry, so we decided to stay out a little while longer. Well, it's well past supper. That's more than a little while. Why are you so angry? I thought I could trust your judgment, but apparently I was wrong. What's that supposed to mean? It means you can't spend any more time with Joshua Coyle until I say so. You'll go to school, help your mother at the clinic, and come straight home. For how long? As long as it takes me to trust you again. It's completely unfair. Joshua's only two years older than I am, and no one tells him what to do. No one said the world was fair, young lady. Lil. I was worried about you. Hello, Joshua. Good afternoon, man. Uh, Mr. Owens told me how much trouble I caused the other night. I just wanted to come by and say how sorry I am for keeping Lillian out so late. You needn't place the blame all in yourself. She's old enough to know better. No, I'm still sorry. Ma, I can't find the bandages. Pa said I can't see you for a while. Pa said you couldn't go out with Joshua. He said nothing about the two of you seeing each other. Thanks, Ma. Well, I have work to do. It was nice to see you, Joshua. There's always room open at the dinner table for you. Thank you, ma'am. Sorry to get you into trouble. You didn't do anything wrong, and neither did I. I'm a grown woman, and I don't need my pa deciding how late I can and can't stay out. He's just worried about you is all. Well, he doesn't need to be. There's no need to be cross, Lily. I mean, I'll still be here when you get off punishment. I'm not going anywhere. I wanted to return this. I uh, finished it. Already? I just gave it to you. Well, once I got started, it was hard to quit. I mean, the sun was already up when I finally closed the book. So you stayed up all night just to read about Captain Nemo? No. Well, I don't think I would have gotten much sleep with or without him. I'll be thinking about you. Me too. Should you be up? Where are you going? I've decided to head on home. I can see you're in good hands. You're leaving? Before the baby comes? Oh, you'll do fine. And besides, the last thing you need is an old granny midwife gumming up the works. <laughs> this doesn't have anything to do with the disagreement between you and Belinda, does it? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Truth is, I'm feeling homesick. I miss sleeping in my own bed. And 
My patients back home don't have a smart lady doctor to take care of them. If you've made your decision, I can't stop you. I'd really love for you to stay, though. I want my family here when the baby comes. Belinda is your family, sweetheart. A and Peter will be back with you next week. Besides, all of you will be home before long, and somebody's got to get the house ready. I'm going to go home to check on Annie. I shouldn't be long. If there's an emergency, just send them my way or come running, which you're very good at. I will, Ma, and thank you. For what? For understanding about me and Joshua. Believe it or not, I was your age once. I'm not going to keep her from the church social. You may not be able to go with her, but you'll see her there. In the meantime, we have an order to finish. Well, all right, I like your attitude. You're leaving. Time for me to go home. Oh, sorry to hear that. I'm going to see her off into town. Annie, I just don't think it's a good idea for you to be carrying luggage and walking into town. It was my idea, Belinda. And I've been all over this whole territory through my entire pregnancy. I think I can handle a short walk into town. Doc Owens! Danny! Lillian told me you was here. Ma's in labor. Okay, there's a horse and buggy in the barn. Help me hook it up. Yes, ma'am. I trust you won't walk into town while I'm away. All right, Peach Pie. Get back in the house and stay put. Linda and I have a baby to deliver. Mrs. Travis is my patient. If you find you don't need me, you have my permission to just shove me out of the way. But if you do, I'm there. Fine, but only because I don't have time to argue with you. Thank you, young man. It's never taken this long. The first few hours seem normal, but then it just stopped. What stopped? The contractions? No, Doc, the baby. It's like it's stuck, but I can't see the head. I'll see to her. Your mama's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's a fetal dystocia. <laughs> A what? The baby's shoulder is stuck. What are you fixing to do with that? We have to get the baby out before it suffocates. We start pulling. We could make things worse. What should we do? Well, if you can't get the baby out from the inside, you'd try it from the outside. All right, help me with her now. That's good. Oh, what are we doing? We're going to flatten out her hip bones. Please, Travis, lay down for me. There. Ow. Now, we're going to see who's stuck and who's not. Ice cream social. I'd sure like to ask you to go with me. So? Your pa said I could see you there. But I can't escort you. Sorry. Joshua. So unreasonable. Look, we were late coming home, okay? Don't tell me you're on his side. What's the difference in an hour or so? We got home just fine. He just doesn't trust me. But your pa had no way of knowing whether you are right when you didn't make it home on time. You sound just like pa. Ma's the only one who understands. Lily, wait a second.
It's a beautiful baby boy, and your wife is fine. Can I see them? Shortly. Well, looks like we got ourselves a baby brother. <laughs> Beautiful. He sure is. Uh, you better be. Leave it to a boy to jam up the works. Uh, that's not doctor's work. Doesn't matter who does it, just as long as it gets done. I learned something today that they didn't teach me in medical school. You seen Lillian? No, why? Well, we thought she might be with you. She's been missing all afternoon. We got in an argument at the shop over Mr. Owens and she stormed off. Said you were the only one who understands her. We were hoping she'd run off to find you. She rode off on that crazy horse I bought for her. It's about to get dark outside if she gets stuck in the countryside. I think I know where she is. you upstairs to a darkened room, doctor's orders. Just take it easy. 
You stay down, all right? I'm gonna get you out of here. Okay. How's Lillian? A few cuts and bruises, but nothing that won't heal nicely. She's out for the night. Lee's sitting with her for a while. Give her a couple of days. She'll be right as rain. At that age, nothing keeps them down. Well, I think her ego has suffered more than her body. Ah, uh, this too shall pass. <laughs> Children are just... So resilient, aren't they? True miracles. Are you still fretting about the baby making? I don't think I'll be making babies anytime soon, Mary. Well, give it up if you want. But I'm telling you, the shine in your hair is not the mark of a barren woman. You don't really believe that, do you? Doesn't matter what I believe. Only matters what you believe. What do you mean? Medicine isn't the only thing that makes people feel better. It's believing that they can be better. I'm sorry I doubted you. You didn't deserve it. The Lord says we are to forgive if we expect to be forgiven. Make me some fresh bacon and eggs in the morning and all is forgiven. That's a promise. Late night tonight. Everyone's worn out. A little sleeping like a pup. You know, I think I might read a book before bed tonight. Really? You never read in bed. I think it'll do me good. Help me unwind after the long day we've all had. Mm. Doc, I've been thinking about us trying to have a baby. Lil's changed our lives in so many wonderful ways. And I'm sure there's plenty of children down at the orphanage who need a good home. You mean you'll still be happy even if we can't have children of our own? I'll be happy as long as I'm with you. Always have been, always will be. Do you think my hair is shiny? Yeah. Yeah, I like the sunrise. I do love you, Mr. Owens. I love you, too. Good night. Oh, all right. You can read your book now. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll go to sleep. Sure, I can help you read it or no. All right. Shouldn't you be in bed? My ball and chain let me come downstairs. She has her mind set on going to the ice cream social. What if I find a shady, comfortable place to just sit and eat ice cream? You are not going to the social. I am a doctor. I vote yes. Well, that's one vote for Dr. Annie and one vote for the midwife. I guess you've got the tie-breaking vote, Doc. I'm sorry, Annie. I'm gonna have to side with the midwife. But I love ice cream. Then I'll send you some. It's not the same. How do I know you're not gonna sneak out when we're gone? Don't give it a second thought, Doc. This old ball and chain will be sitting right here like a prison warden. You're both against me. That's right. Read your book and pout. <sighs> Don't you look beautiful? Except for this. I don't know we'll even notice that. Even Joshua. Especially Joshua. Thanks for telling Joshua he can escort me to the social. You're still coming with your mother and I, right? I told him I wanted to walk in with my family and see him from afar. 
It's very romantic. <laughs> Must be from all the books I read. Pa. I'm sorry for not making curfew the other night. I know you were just worried about me. Don't worry about it. You're growing up so fast sometimes I can't keep up with you. Thanks, Pa. Come here. Mr. Owens, Dr. Owens, would you like some lemonade? No, thank you. No, thank you, Joshua. Hey, partner! How's your ice cream? Dr. Owens, can we talk? Lloyd, maybe you know my husband, Lee? Lloyd, I want to thank you. Mabel's as different as night and day. It's all I can do to keep up with her. Well, you do look like a brand new person. I've had a lot more energy. Still need some extra sleep in the afternoons. But getting stronger every day. Uh, the best medicine is no good if it isn't dispensed or received with a joyful spirit. It's all too easy to forget that. Well, I uh, mostly want to apologize for being stubborn. Thanks again, Doc. It was my pleasure. And I should be the one to apologize to you, Mabel. I had no right to be cross with you when you needed my help. I hope you can forgive me. There's nothing to forgive. Thank you. Have a good day. Wow. That was a very nice thing you just did. You like some ice cream? I love some. I got Lee's telegram. Where's Annie? Oh, the Lord brought you at the right time. Everyone's in town at a social. I need Belinda now. I want to see Annie. Get Belinda now. <laughs> you look beautiful. So you look handsome. I still can't believe it. Can't believe what? That I'm here with the smartest, most beautiful girl in town. Very sweet of you to say, Joshua. It's Annie. You gotta come quick. Joshua, you see to it that Lillian gets home safe. Yes, sir. Yeah! Yeah! Mary. Thank God you're back. She's had a seizure. I've got her in bed. Pete. Best way down here. There's nothing you can do up there. Dear Lord, please watch over Annie and her baby. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lee. You're welcome. Come on, let's have a seat. Waiting downstairs. Right. Just eclipse you. I'm afraid so. Please save my baby. You know what you have to do. I'm gonna close.
close my eyes now. What did she mean? You know what has to be done. That baby has to come out if we're to save it. Even at the risk of her own life. That baby is ready. She was talking about a cesarean delivery. Which I could do at the clinic, but under very crude conditions. Have you ever done one? I did one once at a hospital in Boston. But I had the proper equipment and staff. And there wasn't a clamps involved. Is there no other choice? Not if she doesn't go into labor soon. Well then, we'd best get that labor going. What is that? Scotch broom with a little vanilla to help it go down. Women have been using it for centuries. Scotch broom is a weed? A weed the good Lord made. His wonders to perceive. Does it work? Sure as the sunrise. A little of this, and we'll have our baby boy in no time. Is there anything else I can do? A glass of water. here that you need to do a cesarean delivery? breathing. Contractions closer together. We are going to introduce this baby boy to his new family. It's all right. It's all right. Good job. Keep breathing. Good. Good. Hundreds of babies, but I've never seen one this perfect. And I'm not just saying that because she's my granddaughter. I thought she was a boy. <laughs> she carried like a boy. We live and learn, don't we, Doc? We sure do. Thank you both for being here. There's no other place we'd rather be. Is it okay if I come in? Meet your daughter, Peter. Can I hold her?
these are a few of my favorites. Well, when I asked you for a few books, I thought you'd give me one or two. Well, the way you went through 20,000 links, I figured you'd use a few more. Oh, you think so? <laughs> I should probably get going. Okay. Will I see you later? Sure is this one fine day. Joshua, when you're finished swooning over my daughter, I could use a little help in here. I'm coming. Lord, thank you for the family that surrounds us and the love which envelops us. May we always strive to walk the way you like and be true missionaries of your word. Amen. stuffy inside. I've gotten so used to you being at the house, it's going to be too quiet when we're gone. Well, it's been a week since my darling daughter was born. I think it's time we go home. I'm going to miss you so very much. And all the more reason for you to come visit us soon. What are you doing out here? Oh, I was just getting some fresh air, talking to Annie. You're going to miss her, aren't you? Well, we have her for one more night. Let's enjoy her while we can. Thank you very much, Lee. Uh, it was my pleasure, Pete. And Belinda. Well, I can never thank you enough. Well, I wish I could take all the credit, but I had some expert help. This has been the happiest time of my life. I'm so glad that I got to share this with you. Me too. All aboard, folks! We're burning daylight! I think it's about that time. Will you hold baby Lindy for me? Of course. ourselves an adventure. How do I thank you, Mary? Well, you could start by finding me a husband. I learned a lot from you. And I from you. I may bring them into the world, but you keep them alive and kicking once they're here. <laughs> now, if you ever need a good midwife, you know where to find me. Oh. Midwife. Amy. Mm -hmm. uh, are you sure? I'm a doctor. I know a pregnant woman when I see one, especially when I am one. <laughs> hey, we're gonna have a baby. Baby? <laughs> we're gonna have a baby. Lillian Owens, you were late enough for school as it is. Put those running legs to good use. Yes, Ma. <laughs> Joshua Coyle, don't just stand there and gawk. You've got a job to do. Yes, ma'am. I've got patients to attend to and baby plans to make. Mm -hmm. uh, now, wait.
wait up. Now wait up a bit. How far along are you? Now I'm serious. Well, we gotta start talking about names, really. I mean, I, I, I like Lee for a boy. Oh, you think it's gonna be a boy? Or, uh, you know, maybe Daphne for a girl? What do you think? Well, that's very pretty. Come on, you want a little girl, don't you? What do you think? All right, now, hold on, I'm gonna get the door for you. Oh, wait, my goodness. 